Hey, what's up? Darts here, and we're at my allotment. And I'm going to show you some of the stuff that's been going on here. So let's have a little look around. Let's see what we're going to focus on first. Uh, got lots of stuff to show you. Uh, see in the middle of the screen there. Well, centre screen. Let's have a look at the um, red currant bushes. So they're coming along now. Cover them up to get the birds out. Because they come in there and basically you eat, they eat all the uh, currants before they're even ready. No white currants or black currants this year because uh, they've been eaten. Got my uh, broad beans there. Didn't do too for, well, didn't do very well. I planted over 50 of them, but I had only eight come up. Similar story with the runner beans. Got some bush beans there, but the runner beans uh, planted up, well, must have been about 100, and I only had about 10 come up. But uh, then some of them got eaten by slugs, and I'll show you just the major slug infestation that I've had. But a friend of mine gave me some um, runner beans, so I will have three stacks or three round sort of pillars of uh, runner beans. Last year, I only had, well, didn't only have, I quite had a quite, basically had like a wall of runner beans, but it basically collapsed. Um, let's just go back quickly. So the centre screen there, got my peppers. I can't remember what type of pepper this, peppers they are. Someone gave me those. Here are my, some potatoes. They're in pots that are too small, but as I get the bigger pots, the 10, uh, 20 litre pots, I'm basically just transferring them over and putting them on. Um, actually, sorry, 10 litre pots is the ones I'm growing over there. It's got 10 litre pots, and the ones I'm in at the moment are about ones that they're in at the moment are about six litre pots too small really for potatoes but the 10 litre pots is just about the right size for some earlies but as I get bigger pots I'm just redoing them this mouch has just been put here uh, but it's really good it's got lots of green and brown in there which is good and I'll explain why it is good in a moment uh, but uh, yeah they put like wood chip down there but that's more like a mouch put that straight into the compost there's some potatoes in the 10 litre pots. They're growing quite well in there. I've grown them in those before. Got quite a nice yield. Also got quite a lot of potatoes in the ground. But here's some more potatoes in bags as well. Just real mixed bag. Excuse the pun this year. Uh, got my strawberries. There's the potatoes in the ground there. So I've got half my potatoes in the ground and half of the potatoes. Some of those are ready actually. Half potatoes in the ground and half in the bags and pots. There's me, some of my currants, some of the black currant bushes as well. Got an apple tree here. Now, I didn't expect it to start actually developing fruit. As it's in a pot, that's way too small for it. And I've got another one here. Uh, apple tree. Actually, this one's an apple tree. I think the other one's a plum tree. But uh, we'll see, because the actual fruit looks completely, well, almost the same. Did somebody missell me a plum tree for an apple tree? Who knows? But let's have a look, quick uh, jump over here. Some pasta potatoes. Spare potatoes don't normally grow that far back. Underneath that blue tarp there, there's the trees that nobody wanted. See previous videos on that. On that. And here's the mouch. Yeah, and I've actually put a compost bin to the right there. Yeah, there's the uh, wood chip and it's got wood chip and greenery in there. So just pause the video on this bit here. Uh, on that area there is a bit of unused space and I've just put a compost bin there. And uh, I'm gonna fill, put a lot of compost, well basically make a composting unit there. It's all fenced away. I mean, I'm almost, almost tempted to just dump, tempted just, to just, just like dump all that mouch, all that uh, stuff straight in that corner there. I let it compost there held in by the sides of the fence. But I don't think I'm allowed to do that. You're supposed to leave like a half a metre length between the fence so they can walk around. But I don't think they're going to be walking through those thistles and those fawns, to be honest. Bunch of BS. And a waste of space. So yeah, got a composter. Got some wood there, ready to go. Yeah, I'm going to might bury, I might bury that wood so it rots underground. Yeah, so it rots on the ground, and then I can basically, the whole idea, I can use that mud and that dirt, that comp, more that, 
you know, the mud and dirt straight away. Under there, I've got barrels of, uh, well, pots of green manure I made last year. Just putting that, adding it on as, it go, as we go. Under there, I've got two sheds under that blue tarp. More to come on that in the future. Um, that's a water butt. Use it as a storage container. Let's have a look at my t tomatoes. But first, let's have a look at my onions. Got some onions here. Put some of those in today after recording this video. I'm going to put them in these bundles because I want to eat those as uh, as spring onions. Here's my tomatoes. Have a look at those. Now they're really getting too big now for these containers. So I did actually have them sitting underneath the two directly. Now I've put them all into this one container and then use the other container as a lid. But uh, I don't want them getting blight, so I'm going to build a container. If you don't know, uh, tomatoes get blight because the leaves stay wet too long. If you keep the leaves dry, then they won't get blight. That's why they do okay undercover. Here's some uh, very late um, squash plants. I had loads and loads of squash last year, but this year not done too well with that, to be honest. Uh, i got loads of strawberries. I'll have a look at those in a minute. Uh, in a minute. Uh, here's my beans. So there's the runner beans, half of them died and I got about 10 of them off of a friend of mine. So half of mine, half of my friends. Got a nice bit of rhubarb there, delicious. And we're gonna end this bit, this part here. Got more to show you, but we'll end this part here. There's a couple of toads under here. There's a very big toad, but this one's quite small. But uh, let's have a quick look at it. Pick it up and have a look. Yeah, there's another one under there. That's about four times the size. Every year I have toads come here and uh, it kind of disrupts what I'm doing because I can't, I can't move these because they're living under there. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. Get frogs as well. So, yeah, that's what's going on at the moment. But uh, So, yeah, that's so a little bit of what's going on at the moment. I uh, had a bit of a problem with slugs. See, that's why the toads are good to be there because they will eat the slugs, but... I have way too many slugs for the uh, for the frogs and toads to eat. Those compost bins in the side there, I filled those up with the mouch and I put three, I've got another composter unit or two composters, one at the back of the apartment and one at the side here. So I've got three there, one at the back, all filled, filled with that uh, wood chip slash um, leafy kind of mixture. Perfect compost or perfect material to compost. But uh, yeah, I've had a major issue with slugs this year. And I'll quickly show you just how major. Get ready to cringe. So yeah, here's the slugs and snails. Mm, yeah, basically they all died. I didn't intend for them to die. I was going to try and make some sort of composting unit for them. But uh, it got so hot, they basically all, well, overheated. Um, they were in the shade as well. So, But anyway, they'll be put to good use. People buy blood, fish and bone. I buy... Uh, blood fish and blown to fertilize my potatoes and stuff but actually rotted down slugs and snails they actually make really good fertilizer just as good as blood fish and bone so they got the shells there you know calcium and stuff like that in it really good nutrients just as good as blood fish and fish and blown as i just said so they don't they won't go to waste but let's take a look at something else that's been a major issue and me Having to spend a lot of time removing it from my plot, from my garden. Let's have a look. So another massive issue on the plot. Almost takes, well, probably takes a lot more time. Actually takes, what should take me a few 
you know, half an hour or so to sift through some compost takes hours and hours and hours as I sift every single bit of plastic out. Let's take a look. Some of this waste was here, left here, probably maybe over 10 years old, maybe 15 years old, some of this waste from before this uh, area was an allotment. It was a piece of like, uh, you know, a bit of land that was basically used as a dump, essentially. Well, the plot, the plot was empty and the, all the allotments that were on here before this one got turned into an allotment. They basically dumped all their stuff on here. But there's probably over a decade worth of waste and rubbish. Here's a bit of carpet here. But uh, that's what happens to all your plastic when you chuck it. It never doesn't break down. Metal and plastic and all kinds of stuff. It's just, yeah, I don't want it on my plot every day I'm finding this stuff. This isn't even the half of it. I've thrown half of it away. Got lots of like thin cord there that can choke birds. Look at all this. Bits of plastic, bits of plastic bottle. Packets, crisp packets. I mean, I spend a lot of time sifting this stuff out of my allotment. It's actually really annoying because, as I say, you know, every time I see it, I've got to pick it out. I mean, obviously animals can choke on this stuff. Terrible, terrible rubbish and stuff left around my, you know, around my way. I mean, I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you. I haven't got a clip now, but I'm gonna do a video of all the rubbish that people leave around the path just outside the allotment. People don't care. Just chucking their rubbish everywhere. Most of this is that kind of rubbish. People just tossing their crap. Look at this. Absolutely disgusting. Doesn't break down, people. And there's more. Let's get some more out. See this stuff, just oh, just bad, bad management of plastic. It's a good job. I mean, it's a good job. I you know take the time to remove it, but uh, you can imagine how you know I don't live near the sea here, but you can imagine if you know people who dump this sort of stuff around by the sea you can imagine how easy it is and you know how this stuff ends up in the sea the exact same stuff you see on the uh, beaches I might do a video on that in the future just the waste on the sea especially when I go down to Margate for example um, there's a lot of uh, waste like this just strewn up on the beach but anyway this is the stuff I've removed from the soil and compost and stuff. It's an old pipe. So yeah. It's a lesson to you. Throw your stuff away in the bin. Yeah, bit of glass, glass bottle. Someone's had a good old drink and just smashed the bottle and just left it there. Oh, look at it. It's just actually gross. I mean, plastic is an awesome thing, very useful, but wow, people just don't dispose of it properly. Glass as well. What a nightmare. Anyway, I'll leave you with a bit of music now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.